swimming that way. Let's go. Not even interested in it. Oh, he got it. He came back and grabbed it. <laughs> oh my God. That is a huge snook. I think he's got it, I think he's got it, I think he's got it. Got him, got him. Oh, oh yeah. This is a nice one. Come on, get some ground on him. There we go, that's a nice trout right there. Holy cow, look at this thing. We're gonna measure him up. That trout tickle right there, man. That color, I just got slam on that color today, guys. That doesn't say something. Oh, that's a nice, that's a tarpon. What's up guys, Chris from One More Cast. So yesterday I actually wasn't planning on coming out today. I was gonna let my arm rest a little bit and I had a lot of um, video I had to go through and edit. So I wasn't gonna come out today. But then I was able to get one of the videos edited that I wanted to get edited. So <clears throat> since I got that done and my arm's actually feeling a, a lot better than it was even Saturday. So I decided to go ahead and come out today. Today is actually a lot different than it has been. So lately the past two or three times I've came out here, it's been an outgoing tide. By the time I get out here, it's already going out. It has been 15 to 25 mile an hour winds. And it's just been really tough fishing conditions. I mean the tide, I love an outgoing tide, so the tide wasn't too bad, but with the wind being 15 to 25, even sometimes probably 30 mile an hour gusts, it, it makes it real hard to fish. Well today, I checked the tide and it's actually still coming in right now. So it, at eight o'clock is whenever it, it peaks and then it starts to go back out and it goes out to about 12 o'clock ish and then it comes back in so we've got two tides today so go ahead and get out here see if I can't get into a nice uh, slam today and we'll see what we can get into all right guys it is very very calm out here it has not been like this in a very long time oh he's on it again there we go I think it's a jack. Tighten it down a little bit. Feels like a jack. Looked like a jack when it hit it. That's the issue I was having yesterday was all these jack right here. It looks like a jack. Yep, it's jack. These guys have been everywhere lately. All right, hang on, bud, hang on. Let me sit down so I can handle them a little bit better. This was my issue yesterday. There 
goes. All right, let's hopefully we don't get into another one of those. Jack. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't like these jack. They're fun for just catching when you're having like today obviously I'm actually I'm enjoying catching them in a sense. Because they're one a good fight, two, you know, just all around a fun fish to catch. Especially with kids and stuff like that. They fight hard. But they do get annoying sometimes. There it goes. Especially on tournaments. Like yesterday I was having to fight through the jack and they fight so hard and for so long that it's kind of wasting time in a sense. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this. I'm going to go peek right into the nose of that. Try to get a cast a little bit deeper in there. Alright, let's see if I can't. Get a nice cast in there. There we go. Well, the thing is, if he goes straight back, it's going to be a rough... Oh, oh. Oh, something's on it. Okay. Let's try to get that again. Back pedal. Just a little bit. drops off there pretty deep so Ooh. holy crap I'm pretty sure that was a tarpon <sighs> he just broke me off wow just straight up broke me off damn that was a nice fish Pretty sure that was a tarpon. Pretty sure that was a tarpon. All right, so we got all tied up now. Putting on this new diesel minnow. It's the slam shady color. That's what I've been throwing the most lately, and it's just it's just working, guys. This 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 color right here is just working. So I'm not gonna change it. I'm pretty sure beer run or you know any other color um, close to it would work but this one right here is just it's just working so I'm sticking to it so I just want to go over like one thing that I've learned um, over the past you know a few months is I've, I've really started switching up like working with depth control so and I've noticed that so I've, I've always known it kind of had something to do with it I just never really you know I always stuck with 8 ounce 8 ounce that was my favorite thing to throw 8 ounce well I have learned that in the higher tides you have a higher tide <clears throat> if you throw I'll throw a 3 16 ounce now so that's why I've got tied on now anytime I have a higher tide I'll throw a 3 16 ounce and then once I get into lower tides negative tides stuff like that that's whenever I'll start to go back to the 8th ounce. And I've noticed switching up the weight of my jig head has helped me a lot. Like right here, it drops off fairly deep. So I got a 3 16th ounce on. And it seems to be working. You know, yesterday during a tournament it worked. So, I mean, it's been working the past few times I've been out here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in here again. See if I can get something else to hit this thing. Alright, hooked up. Feels like a nice trout. 
Might not even be a nice one. I was just pulling it at that point. Oh yeah. Okay. A little trout. Oh, he let go. That's all right. He wasn't that big, and honestly, I'm not too worried about measuring fish today. I found a really simple way to measure my fish yesterday, or so I found a very simple way to measure my fish on Saturday. And it's a, it's a something that I should have known to do to make my life easier, but I just didn't because you know, sometimes you don't think of the most simple thing that could make something easier. You don't think about it. But <clears throat> before, whenever I was trying to measure fish, you know, I'd have the fish right here and I'd hold the phone up here and I'm kind of guesstimating where the button is to take the picture. And <clears throat> before it was just hard and sometimes I'd hit it, I'd look at it didn't take the picture so I had to hold it up here again hold the fish try to find that button push it to take a picture and um, <clears throat> I found that it was just so much easier to set my camera a timer for five seconds and I'd push it here so then count one two three four five boom and take the picture and I'd look at it and the picture would be there so that actually helped me a lot if I take <laughs> how to take pictures so if any of you guys had any issues trying to like push the button and take the picture for the fish during the tournament and if you guys are watching this then yeah try to um set your camera for a timer and when you push it down here because sometimes your fingers are wet so you'll go to push it and it doesn't take the picture because your fingers wet that way down here you can push the button see the timer start going and you know that your phone's going to take the picture Got something messed with me. I don't know if I was recording last time. Can't remember. But I think I missed that last fish I caught on that shrimp. I thought I hit it and I don't think I started recording. I just just in case I didn't, I just caught a shrimp trout on the shrimp. You know. And I I, I was saying that I really like this shrimp a lot, you know compared to a DOA pre-rig shrimp and a Savage Gear pre-rig shrimp. I mean, I've been throwing this one every trip that I've gone out the past like four or five trips. I've been throwing this one and it's been working fairly well, you know. It's been working pretty good. It's holding up. It's not getting tore up at all. Catching some decent trout on it. I caught a really nice grouper on it. I haven't caught a snook or a redfish on it yet, but I think it's going to be like like if I see a redfish, I think this would be a really good sight, uh, sight fishing bait. But yeah, it's been working really well. But I was saying, just in case I didn't record, is just kind of like hanging out here right now, kind of waiting for that tide to start moving back out. Right now we're more on a slack tide. You can kind of notice it in the fish and fish aren't really biting right now and there's not a lot of wind right now so <clears throat> we're almost we're at like a slack tide so I'm just kind of fishing this you know catching a few trout that you can usually whenever it's like a slack tide and there's not a lot of wind you can usually go out on a flat and catch trout while you're waiting for the tide to switch again but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and work my way over. It's more of like a fun day. Fishing trip, not really stressing. Catching anything just because <clears throat> it's um these these conditions aren't gonna be like this on Saturday. On Saturday it's gonna be completely different conditions. It's gonna be a, a really low tide. Um it's gonna be really windy. Right now we've got a really high tide. It's about to start ripping out. It's not gonna be like that on Saturday at all. We got a new move. All right, got another one trolling. All right. All right. Oh, there he goes. All right, easy release. he hit that this deep 
it's pretty deep right here so i'm surprised he was actually he actually hit it i was thinking that i had more odds getting them when i came on the flat so i just accidentally dunked my reel in water and that's why i always bring extra water with me that way i can what i'll do is i'll cast my reel out and i'll put it in my rod holder and i'll pour some fresh water on it but i always bring extra water with me so even if i know i'm only gonna drink like two of those big bottles while i'm out here i always grab three or four of them just in case Bad one. Ouch. That hurt. All right. It's a better trout than what I've been getting. Get this hook out of his mouth. All right, a little bit better of trout, better than what we've been getting. It's good. All right, got another trout. Pliers. It's not too deep, just in the side of the cheek. There we go. And let him go. Oh, that feels like a jack swimming at me. See a lot of flashing going on. Oh no! Wow, that's a, just a nice trout. <laughs> Started going back and forth. Oh gosh, I probably got water on my camera. There we go. Another decent trout. Now one of these weekends when I go fishing, I'm gonna start bringing them home. During the week, I don't have time to. I really don't have time to go, go home. And... <clears throat> During the week, I don't really have any any time to go home and fillet so there we go let him go and there we go uh, as soon as i set the hook they're swimming right at me there he goes another nice trout yeah these are all perfect keeping size trout I keep trout that are about 16 to 17. Those are my favorite sizes to keep. I don't like to keep them too big, and I don't like to keep them too small. So, like 16, 17, and that's with any fish really. I like to keep mid slot. I don't really like to keep the lower end or the higher end slot. I like to keep right about the middle. What is this? Oh shoot, little cuda. Yeah, I don't want you flopping around at all and try to bite me. Little cuda, nice. Easy. Oh yeah, look at that guy. Those teeth. Cuda, right there. Get away from me. I don't want to mess with that guy at all. I'm seeing a lot more barracuda around here. More and more every every trip almost, but he bit my tail off. Look at that. Looks like I'm gonna have to change my uh my paddle tail. I got no more uh slam shadies. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put a different one on now. I don't know how he chewed my tail off like that, but. This feels like, a, oh, I let go. I had my drag too tight. Oh, it was way too tight. I must have adjusted it. That was a big trout. Oh, it was way too tight. Oh, man. All right, so I had something bump me over there. I threw back over and I ended up getting it. Looks like a red. That's what it looks like. That's what it feels like also, so let's see. Yeah, there's that red tail. All right, and all I was doing was fan casting. That's all I was doing. Oh, come on. I love this float net just because I can just kind of set it down next to me and let it do its thing while I'm reeling. I can just leave it right here in front of me. All right, there we go. He's got some pretty cool spots on him. Get my, get to my uh, kayak. All right. Just one thing I love about this floating net, I can just set it right there in front of me. Never have to worry about it. Well, some line, there we go. All right. ourselves a nice red right here. Alright, right there. That aqua dream spoon right there. Nice little red. It's got a cool little spot up this way. But yeah. It's nice. Right there. Alright, so we're gonna get him on hugs real quick. pointing at the water but I guess we'll find out one last look at this guy we'll go ahead and release him all right there he goes all right got it red there it is there it is oh there's my snook I knew we were gonna get something off this spot over here. Yeah. There we go. Tighten down a little bit. Get him in. snook right there got that lure so we'll go ahead and get this guy out spoons out all right all right there we go nothing big but hey we'll take him we'll go ahead and let him go all right there he goes all right so that snook frayed me up pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and retie. Um, and like I've showed you guys before, but what I do is I put 
a good length of 20 pound fluoro on and then I add a little bit of 30 at the end of it and it seemed to be it seems to be working very good for me I mean I've noticed when when I started doing this I actually ended up getting more bites not necessarily from the snook but from the trout and the redfish especially the redfish I mean I started getting a lot more bites from the redfish because I used to run just straight 30 or straight um, 25 and it's been working really good for me I've noticed a huge uh, percentage in my hookup ratio and all I do is I use I tie this stuff on with a blood knot it's a very simple knot it you can tie it really fast it doesn't take much time to tie it at all and at first I thought okay that's more knots more more room for failure but honestly I haven't really had an issue with having this knot in there so this knots actually hasn't affected um, break offs at all but yeah I use this um the Seaguar inshore that's what I use I use it for my 30 my 20 and I do still have 25 I keep on me but yeah I use that um inshore edition and I really like it a lot I, I I really like it a lot so that's what I use I used to use the blue I used to use the blue label and um I mean I liked it a lot too but then one day they were out of the blue label so I got the inshore one I actually like the inshore one a little bit better I feel like it's it's a little bit more abrasive resistant than the blue label but I think it's a jack I think it's a jack because there's been a lot of jack out here lately I can't tell right now but when he hit I've seen a lot of flash so yeah I'm pretty sure it's a jack yeah it's a jack All right. And normally with Jack, when they get hooked, they stay hooked. So I, I actually do try to horse them in. I'll lock down my drag and I'll try to force them in. Because these guys rarely come off. But they're so slimy. Yeah, so these guys... They rarely just pop off. Come on. They got really hard mouths. Spoon, there it is. All right, little Jack. I think it's another Jack. I think they're just schooling over here. Yeah, it's another Jack. I think they're just schooling over here right now. They're everywhere. Oh, I didn't even, that's why he felt so hard when, he, when I first hooked into him. It's foul hooked. Get to my pliers. Hang on. All right, there you go. Man. Oh, man, those are nice size reds, too. That's okay. You know, I'm not mad that I didn't get them. I know they're here. There's been reds on this flat. <clears throat> Every time I've came here, I've seen them. I know they're here. So I'm not, not too worried that I didn't catch them. I know they're here. That's really all I need to know. They've been here for every um, another jack, most likely. Another jack, most likely. Shaking around a lot, doing a bunch of twitching. Dang. I'm gonna throw around that spoon a little bit more on this flat, see if I can't get a red. Okay. 
these jacks. Like I said, jacks are fun. They are fun. But not when my arm's hurting. See, it feels a lot better than it did. 100% better than it did. But it still is a little sore. And luckily my job isn't too physically demanding at all, so... I'm gonna go ahead and work this spoon around. Yeah, luckily, luckily my job isn't that physically demanding at all. So I'll have all week to rest it. Put a little procure on here. I'm gonna throw a spoon around. Try to keep it out of the deep end. Try to get it. I'm gonna try to get a red over here on one of these flats right here. Swimming that way. Not even interested in it. Oh, he got it. He came back and grabbed it. Oh, nice. It's on that prawn star. <laughs> I just watched him eat it. It looked like he turned away from it, but he jumped on it. <laughs> that was a nice one. I just sight casted him with his prawn star. That was awesome. That's why I said this is going to be a sight casting bait 100%. This is a better red. Oh god, I love sight casting these things. Yeah, it's a nice one. He's not even really fighting hard yet. I, he looked like he was swimming away from it, but then he turned around. I twitched it. And when I twitched it, because he started swimming away from it, and that's why I thought he wasn't going to be interested in it anymore. So I, I jumped it real hard real quick. And he turned around and whacked it. There we go. Oh man, I love sight casting these things. That's the best feeling in the world, especially with a with a, a, an artificial bait. That's a nice one. Let's go. Look at that. That prawn star right in his mouth. Look, let's go, guys. Come on. Who needs bait? when you got Z-Man fishing products. Right here, look at that thing right here. Look at that. That shrimp's right in, right in the mouth. Awesome. All right, get this guy out of the net. All right, right there. Just sight cast him. That's a Z Man Prawn Star. Not a bad little guy. Nice little fish right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get it out. These are the kind of fish that we need. As long as we can keep catching fish like this, we'll be good. Bait out. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, he was ready to go. Look at that, ready to go. Favorite. Oh, it came off. That was too tight. All right, so I think that the wind has shifted already. There's zero wind. Look how look how flat this is. <clears throat> I haven't seen it this flat out here in a very long time. So I think the wind has shifted, definitely, 100%. It's coming from the west now, which it was supposed to do that. But it's getting hot. These fish are starting to die down some. It's a lot of mullet, but these fish are really not wanting to eat. So I'm gonna finish walking this flat like I said I was gonna do, then I'll probably call it a day, head home. It's been a good day of fishing, you know. I'm happy. 
I got broke off by something big. I'm not happy about it, but I mean, it was fun. Um, caught two reds, a snook, handful of trout, little cuda. I'm happy with today. Oh, there's redfish. Oh, they're not redfish. Those are, yeah, those are sheep's heads. I've been seeing a lot of sheep's head on this flat lately. But yeah, it's been a good day so far. I'm on my last GoPro battery. I need to get another pack of them, honestly. I've got three. I usually go through about two and a half a day. Sometimes I would go through all three. Depends on how that day is. It depends on how much talking I do too. I do talk a lot. But I try to fill my videos with a bunch of information, not just catching fish. I like to put information in there. So honestly, I mean, I know people say, oh, I talk too much. That's fine. You know, I make these videos mainly for me, you know, for the people that want to learn something. <clears throat> so if you want to learn something, like I said, subscribe, hit that bell notification. If you just want to see fishing, I mean, I do got a lot of fishing. I got a lot of catching, I should say. I mean, I feel like fishing is in a general learning new things, learning new tactics, learning new baits. I'm just all around learning new things and then applying those things you learn to catching fish so if you learn want to see just catching i do have a lot of catching on here but if you want you can skim through my talking and watch the catching if you think i talk too much that's fine you know i'm not on here to be the most popular <clears throat> but if you want to learn something and learn about fishing as a whole and not just catching then like i said hit that subscribe hit that bell notification I'm going to continue walking this flat. Right now I'm just taking a little break. I'm just walking. I'm just observing right now. There's a lot of times I'll pull up to a spot and I actually won't make a cast for like probably 10 minutes because I'll just, I'll anchor down. I'll sit there and I'll observe. I'll look and see, okay, so I've got a school of mullet over here. I've got a school of mullet over here. I've got a school of mullet in front of me. There's a dead zone right here in front of me. There's nothing in front of me. <clears throat> dead zone behind me it's all flat calm the wind let's just say it's coming from this way okay so wind's coming from this way which is not right now there's no wind coming at me at all so right now i can cast this way i know the tide right now is moving out so it's moving this way kind of or it's moving that way but um so i'll sit and i'll observe i'll sometimes i'll even take my lure and put it in the water if i can't like right now i can't see which way the tide's really going Sometimes if you look at the grass on the bottom and see which way the grass is leaning, that's which way the tide's going. But sometimes I'll drop my lure, a lighter lure, and see which way it, it see which way it flows. So now I know the water flow. So sometimes I'll sit in a spot for like 10 minutes before I actually make a cast and I'll just observe. Because sometimes you'll be sitting here just looking, looking at the moat, then you'll see a tail pop up. And that's something you normally won't see if you sit there and you try to power fish, which I do both. I'll do a power fish. I'll fish a spot. If I don't catch something within so much time, I move. But I sit there and I observe before I make those casts. Oh, that's a big red right here. Oh, there's a shark right here too. Look at that shark. I just said I didn't see any sharks. A nice little shark right there but there was a big red and i threw right over it because i wasn't paying attention i don't know all right so i'm back in my kayak now it's just you know i don't mind wading with some sharks they don't really scare me too much i respect the environment but there's like seven sharks over here right now and there's too many for me to actually watch my back there's actually two of them right here in front of me. And there's that one's big. That one over there is big. It's probably like six foot. So no, nope. like I said, I don't mind wading with sharks. And do, am I afraid of sharks? No, but in a sense, yes, I also am. You know, <clears throat> this is their territory. They rule this right here. I'm an alien coming into their area, so I do. I, I know my limits. I know when I should, when to respect that they're around. 
because that one that I just seen was about six foot it's a pretty big one and that at that point I don't mind the little three four even five footers but those six footers once they get that big I'm done that's I'm not gonna mess with them anymore but so I'm gonna paddle along the outskirts there's a little fish right here behind me it looks like a sheephead yep so I'm gonna paddle around these outskirts and then uh, work my way back but that even that shark over there that's a big shark his fins barely out right now and I seen his tail come up a while ago and it that's a big shark too over there so there's quite a few big ones out here right now there's a red right here in front of me look at it eat it eat it oh he's turning around look at it he's looking at it. he's looking at it. oh he's seen my boat oh no I, <laughs> that's the only part I hate about trying to sight fish <laughs> fish in my kayak because I I can't control where I'm going to but he turned around he was gonna eat it nice honestly this is why I love my area that I fish is because a lot of other areas I mean most of the fishing is up against mangroves and look at this shark right here another one right here in front of me and Jack's following him look at that big stingray right there <clears throat> Standing up here, you see a lot, but it also makes it hard to sight cast in these calm conditions. But, um, so one of the reasons I love, you know, my area that I fish is because of this right here. Most, there's a lot of other areas where you got to fish the mangroves to get anything really. I mean, it's a lot of mangrove fishing, mangrove line fishing. It's this right here, flats fishing. This is my favorite type of fishing right here, is fishing these flats. Get on a grass flat, look in the potholes, um, work the sandbars, and I can also, if I want, I can go fish the mangroves. I've got so many different varieties of fishing here. I see another red. There's a couple of them actually. He's looking at, oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. Get it again. He dropped it. He dropped it. All right, so he's probably not going to hit again. Let's see. So this one, I got a fish from behind him. It's going to be hard. Get it right in front of him. Come on, eat it. Come on, hit it. Oh, he didn't want it. Oh, I set the hook way too early. That's what happened with that one. I set the hook way too early, but he ate it. Man, this is going to be a phenomenal bait. video I actually tried to do an outro on the water and it rem I went back and I looked at it and it reminded me why I don't do my outro on the water anymore I had planes flying above me making a bunch of noise the paddle from me paddling was making a lot of noise usually my outros are longer than my intros so doing my intro in the morning there's never any noise really first thing in the morning but in the afternoon, there's a lot of construction, hammers, saws, airplanes, all sorts of stuff going off. So that's why normally I will do my intro on the water in the morning. But <clears throat> my outros, that's why I kind of went away from doing them at the ramp. Unless I'm fishing with somebody, then I'll just do one in my truck. I enjoy it more. I'm able to control the noise in my truck more. It was a good day out there today. You know, when I went out this morning, I knew there was going to be barely any wind. And the wind did end up when it once it hit like 10 o'clock I the wind shifted to the west like it said it was gonna do so if there was any day where the wind was it like a hundred percent perfect it was today because this morning it showed it was gonna be like eight ten mile an hour winds which it was about eight mile an hour winds this morning on the way out started in the northeast and then eventually shifted to the east and then <clears throat> it calmed down like it said it was gonna do then it shifted to the west when I shifted to the west zero shut off no wind at all from where I was so the wind was actually very accurate today the tide was very accurate today I mean it ended up going out and I think it went out just a little bit later than what the tide chart said but 
it did eventually start moving out pretty good. So, um, everything was accurate today, which was nice. That's, that's nice to have sometimes. But there's that, like, so having a lot of wind sucks. It really sucks. It sucks for getting out there. It sucks for trying to control the kayak. Having, you know, moderate wind, you know, 8 to 10 mile an hour winds, those are nice. I like that because you're able to, it, there's a little bit of water. It helps with water movement still. So having a moderate wind is nice. Now having zero wind, no wind at all, I don't like that. I can't stand having zero wind. Because zero wind makes it hard. You have to use different baits. And like I showed in my video, I switched to that uh, shrimp at the like last half of my video because when you're fishing zero, no wind, it's very calm. Jerk shads work great. Shrimp profile, Ned rig profiles, finesse baits work amazing in those conditions. But it still makes it very hard because that means every little movement you make will spook any fish that you're trying to trying to catch. It's great for sight casting because you can. There's no ripple in the water, so you can see the fish. You can kind of see where they're heading. You know, I sight cast. I ended up landing one that I sight casted. But I had one. I had two or three of them follow my lure. And they were gonna hit it but until my kayak they seen the shadow of my kayak and they kind of went away and one of them I just set the hook too early I watched him eat it and he said I set the hook too early so I mean it was a pretty fun day though I mean like I said caught snook redfish trout barracuda jack I mean caught quite a bit of fish today so it was a fun day the main reason I did that way is because this weekend has completely different conditions than today today was no wind um, it was an incoming tide that eventually switched to outgoing. Next weekend, it's not like that at all. We're going to have negative tides. It's going to be very windy. Completely different conditions, which means the fish, what they did today, they're not going to do the same on Saturday. So, me and Riley are going to sit down, make a plan, see what the wind's doing, see where it's coming from. Like I said, I've already kind of looked at it, but it will change a little bit up till Friday. Then Friday night, we're going to sit down, we're going to make a plan. We're gonna see what 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 we're gonna do. Um, Riley and CJ have both been really good at sitting down and making plans out. So I've been, you know, they've been going on their phones and screenshotting maps and drawing out a map on how they want to fish it. They've been doing pretty good at it. So I've been kind of letting them do that on their own. That way they can learn that part of fishing. Because like I said, my channel isn't about catching. It's about fishing. It's about learning. It's about all that other stuff. <clears throat> my channel is more about the fishing aspect, finding the fish, fishing conditions, baits to use, what pound test to use, size reels, rods, you know, mine is more about learning about fishing and the whole aspect of fishing instead of just catching the fish, you know, but I love catching the fish. I enjoy um, putting videos of me catching fish and I enjoy people watching me catch fish, but I also like the other aspect of it also. That is my main reason for making this channel was specifically for trying to teach someone something new but like I said it was an awesome day out there I had a lot of fun out there you know I was just out there by myself it's the first time besides the tournament that I've actually gone out there and fished by myself I mean the tournament had a little bit of pressure on me this is the first time that I went out there with nobody else and just fished with no pressure just out there having fun so it was a great it was a great day um, my arms definitely feeling a lot better so I'm going to be perfectly fine for this tournament coming up. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification down at the bottom so you're notified when I post a new video. Remember guys, it's always time for one more cast. I'll see you guys Saturday and let you know how I did.